So Games Workshop perhaps pokes the hornet's nest and puts cannon female custodies into Warhammer 40k? Lots of battle forces sold out quick, and there's new rules updates for the Dark Angels. Let's talk about all the news going on with Games Workshop's news and releases. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today I thought I'd do a bit of a news roundup for other 40k things from over the week. Things that maybe didn't really need a full video to themselves, but I found interesting in one way or another. In particular, the rather surprising lore change from the new Custodius Codex. But also I thought I'd cover here a bit of the fallout from the Battle Force releases of Games Workshop this week. The Dark Angels rules update that is orbiting significant. Some fun or combat patrol rules and taking a look at New Skaven for Age of Sigma and future releases for 40k. Lots to talk about, so let's jump straight in. First up, let's talk about perhaps the big one. Really quite a surprising move from Games Workshop, just casually including a female Adeptus Custody in the Codex. I noticed this one posted on R40k Law, and I'll link that down below in the video description if you want to take a look at the post and discussion yourself. Basically, in the new Adeptus Custodius Codex, there's a short story in it in which it basically follows a female custodian who's taking part in the Blood Games. That's essentially the brutal sort of war games activity that the Adeptus Custodius take part in. Some amongst their number are dedicated to trying to undermine and infiltrate their own defences, exposing cracks in the armour of the Imperial Palace so they can better prepare for real threats. There's a short story that follows one custodian in that, a Calidace Torvalia Kesh, planning an act of explosive sabotage on the Imperial Palace to try and undermine the Custodian's defences. The story itself is kind of fun, but the only surprising thing is the Custodian's identity herself, and it is absolutely confirmed to be a Custodian Guard here, basically. She's referred to as a Custodian, carries a Guardian Spear, not a Sister of Silence or anything like that. To my understanding, that will be a new law change for the Custodies. Before now, I don't think there's ever been any clear canon female Custodian just in the same way that female space marines have just never been a thing in the law. I guess technically custodies are something different to space marines and superior, and the indoctrination and upgrade process I think is very different to the space marines, there are no experts on that. Though I do feel it's just a bold move for Games Workshop, seeing as we've not had these before, and the whole female space marine debate has been a bit of a trigger topic for years now, kind of to the point where it's a meme in itself. I'm really not going to venture too far down that particular rabbit hole this video. There are certainly people who feel very, very strongly about it, and other people who really couldn't care too much. I'm certainly not going to tell you guys what to think. Just maybe try not to tear yourselves apart too much down there in the comment section, people. The secrets of Custodes genetic alchemy aside, this weekend did see the launch for the Custodes and the Orcs. Really quite a big weekend for 40k. New battle forces, new codexes, and new combat patrols all at once. I was kind of interested to see exactly how Games Workshop would handle their Battle Force launch. It always is a bit of an area of contention, with them often selling out far too quickly. And it does seem a bit weird that there's quite a lot of regional variation in this one. Some of them have gone really quickly in some areas of the world, and some seem to remain with good supply. Games Workshop selling out of box sets really, really fast isn't exactly unexpected at this point, really. Though I dare to dream that they might have done a little bit better with these ones, given that they had a relatively good supply of crude. That was still a popular box set for a major faction, even if it was a bit different to the norm. And it was always likely that these box sets were going to be in very high demand, given that both Orcs and Custodes are really popular armies. Around the world, it looks like in the UK and EU web store, both box sets sold out really fast. The Stomper Boys went faster than the Auric Champions, though both were gone within a few hours. Discount retailers didn't get very good supplies of them as well. There were quite a few reports online of some stores only getting something like three or five boxes. In general, very low amounts that were never going to satisfy customers' desires. Games Workshop keeping the lion's share of these Battle Force boxes for themselves. In the US and Canadian web store, the Auric Champions box still appears to be available at time of recording around about like six hours later. The Stomper Boy seems to have gone really quite fast there as well. It did look like it was the more popular out of the two box sets. I did those channel polls on Friday. And interestingly, it looked like the most in-demand kit was actually the Combat Patrol box for the Custodies, then the Stomper Boys and the Auric Champions in third. So maybe not too surprising, there's a few more of those left on the shelves. I feel like maybe the Auric Champions has been kind of upstaged by the Combat Patrol, which a lot of people were seeing as better, given that it's not quite as overloaded with bikes, which a lot of people might have towards the max amount that you can field anyway. Otherwise, over in Australia and New Zealand, supply of these seems to have been kind of weirdly good. Neither of them had sold out when I made these slides, so I guess good that they've had the opportunity to buy them, even if I know you guys down there do pay kind of extortionate prices versus the rest of the world. 
In any case, though, always a bit disappointing when people aren't able to get a hold of the kits that they want to. I've certainly heard a few anecdotes of people missing out on the Stomper Boys who wanted them. As ever, it would be nice if Games Workshop could meet demand with these box sets after hyping them up so much. Otherwise, this week, amongst all of the big Custodies and Orcs previews and leaks, there was a very, very small amount of content for The Unforgiven, which came out on Wednesday, I think. It's narrated to the Dark Angels Codex, and as for its size and importance, you can see the entirety of it here towards the top right-hand corner of the screen. Admittedly, this was never going to be about trying to rewrite the Codex, make it more fun or even more balanced. This is just literally the bug fix update that comes a few weeks after the book goes live, so only really to fix rules that just flat out didn't work, or maybe were just working very weirdly and not how intended. Dark Angels players, I think, were pretty much hoping for literally anything after a fairly underwhelming Codex launch. It feels like the Codexes for Dark Angels and Custodes shared some themes. The majority of changes to data sheets were nerfs and the detachments weren't that exciting. The only change in the actual errata is this one to the Company of Hunters. It's an absolutely minimal change to a keyword. Outrider squads from your army gain the battle line keyword. Previously, I believe it read Outriders. Basically, we knew what they meant either way, but this was the keyword that was actually listed on the unit, so it rules as written maybe didn't work until then, though I think everyone knew what they meant. Other things that weren't changed, I think, were the Deathwing Sergeant not being able to take a Power Fist, unlike the regular Terminators now, and maybe one possibility that might have been nice was Azrael maybe being Aratus to lead the company heroes again. He was able to pre-Codex, and I feel like it would have just been a nice move to give him the option of that, it seems that they're going with Inner Circle Companions as the replacement for Cumbly Heroes within a Dark Angels army though, even if he can still technically field the heroes. In the meantime, in terms of competitive play, the actual Codex detachments don't seem to have been doing very well since the book went live. As was noted even before the Codex, Iron Storm Spearhead Dark Angels still seems to be doing well, Azrael maybe alongside Storm Ravens and Ravenwing Dark Shroud seems to be good. According to StatCheck 40k, that's on around about a 55% win rate post-Codex, and apparently the most played out of the Codex detachments, at least at Grand Tournaments, is the Inner Circle Task Force. That one did seem the most interesting rules-wise to me, though unfortunately people haven't been doing so well with it so far. Only winning a meagre 28% of tournament games doesn't look like anyone's being able to make that work in some sort of meaningful way yet. I suspect realistically it's probably not going to be that strong unless Terminators got really quite a lot stronger given that the detachment is somewhat focal on them being quite Deathwing themed. Overall though I feel like Dark Angels will probably be hoping for some love in the balanced data slate. Azrael could afford to be a little bit less absolute or to include but otherwise the vast majority of the Codex units could do with either points drops or rules buffs. There's just not a lot of particularly exciting units in the Unforgiven lineup at the moment. Next up, and one thing that I didn't mention in the Orc Codex, was some Orc Combat Patrol rules. Each time Games Workshop redoes a Combat Patrol set, they post a new set of rules for it. This one is for Morgrim's Butchers, the new Beast Snagger Combat Patrol set with the Beast Boss, 4 Squig Hogs and 20 Beast Snagger Boys. These guys are currently up for pre-order. Plenty of the discount retailers do actually seem to have sold out for them. I guess Orcs are really quite popular. Looks like at least Element Games in the UK, which is linked down in the video description, does have some of them left. They're going for 20% off over there. Otherwise, for their rule set, if you're actually playing the Combat Patrol game mode, they get the War Faction rule, as you'd expect. The standard melee buff, advance and charge, and invulnerable saves. For the enhancement choice for, I guess, Morgrim himself, you get a 5 plus feel no pain and plus 1 to saves against ranged attacks for his unit of beast snaggers. Or alternatively, you can take Precision Melee with Sustained Hits 1 if you'd rather have Personal Combat Might. After those two, I feel like the Durability buff is the better one. I guess it could be shaken up opponent to opponent if you had a particularly good character to punch to death. Otherwise, for secondary choice for the Combat Patrol, you either get to mark a Monster or Vehicle unit if the opponent has one, or their Warlord if not, 8 victory points if you kill it, and 12 victory points if done by the Beast Boss Morgrim. And the other one is a taking point sort of rule. At the end of the turn, you score one victory point for each no man's land objective that you hold, or three victory points if you take the enemy's home objective. For datasheet changes, the stat lines are broadly the same. A couple of special rules are lost, as they often are in combat patrol. There's no devastating wounds on the charge for the beast boss. That does mean he's nowhere near as utterly lethal to vehicles and things. It looks like there's no bomb squig or ignoring move modifiers for the squig hogs that just get their profile and the feel no pain pretty much. Otherwise, finally for stratagems, they've got access to a minus one to wound for infantry if the enemy's strength is higher than their toughness. 
The Beast Boss or the Squig Hogs can cause a battle shock within 3 inches with minus 1 to the test. That one triggers in the fight phase, so could be useful for scoring the second secondary objective, but otherwise perhaps not so much. And the other one is a piling move of 6 inches. I guess maybe not the worst thing in the world for getting a whole horde into close combat, but in general, out of those three, I feel like the minus 1 to wound is where most of the CP is going to go, besides generic core stratagems. In any case, kind of fun to see these little rule sets as a little microcosm of the faction. As it goes, I feel like their profiles are at least fairly hordy and destructive and fairly tanky. They might have to foot slog through a lot of fire to get to the enemy lines, though. For Age of Sigma, early in the week, we had the reveal of the Clan Rats. I was really quite interested to see some new Skaven, particularly given that Games Workshop just gave us a big teaser with the Age of Sigma reveal trailer, all very nicely done and animated, and they just talked in very general terms about the new edition, but didn't actually even show us a teaser of a single model, which I thought was really quite a mistake there. In any case, they might have been a bit slow, but they managed to get the new rat things to us eventually. In general, I feel like they're really quite nice updates on a classic. Pretty well the exact sort of same theming and styling as what they had before, but really quite a lot better realised in higher detail. And I do really like the amount of character these guys have had, a few of them are sinister and shadowy with hanging chain mail or cloth obscuring their faces. A fair few of them clearly having a scream at you. And there's lots of fun little things like the guy ringing the bell, plus a few more battle-hardened rats who have got scars to their faces. They're generally pretty well done, I think. In general, the online reaction that I saw to them has been broadly positive. I might have a look in from time to time as to other models they've released for the faction, if they do give them anything particularly fun. Otherwise, look into the future, next for Warhammer 40k should be the Tau and Kroot release. They've already had their big launch box and their codexes out in the wild, but we're still waiting for the release of their other Kroot units, plus the actual codex properly going live with their new digital points and everything. Currently, we're still waiting to see if anything will change from the previous digital download. They'll have to add in some points for some new units, and the ones on the codex, as ever, are a bit weird. Otherwise, on the horizon, the Orcs and Custodians will get their points updated sometime within the next two weeks as a digital download. I look forward to covering both of those on the channel. Again, by normal patterns, I wouldn't normally expect them to change massively from the previous digital points that they had. I feel like if they're doing things right, then the Custodians should either be the same or cheaper if they want them to still be fairly good in 40k. As it stands without further erratas and things, it does look like they've lost a lot of power in their core rules in the Codex. Orcs also had a few major datasheet changes or units that all work in a very different way in certain detachments. I'm not sure how heavy handed they'll go with the points changes though. I guess things like beast bosses on Squigasaurs and the Squig Hog Boys might be ones to look at in particular. Then following that it'll be the Chaos Space Marine release, the two Battle Force box sets plus the Combat Patrol. Not 100% hopeful about there being big supplies of battle forces to go around based on the Orcs and Custodes. I really am looking forward to seeing the new detachments for the Chaos Codex. I really hope they've managed to redo them in a bit more style similar to Necrons and Orcs perhaps, genuinely having at least some detachments that look really quite different and are kind of bold with the rules. In any case, plenty of interesting stuff happening in 40k. I'm going to guess the comments might be mainly full of carnage from the Adeptus Custodius news, but we'll be interested to hear your thoughts on all of the rest as well. How did the launch of those box sets go? What do you make of the Dark Angels errata? And are any of you looking to pick up some rat things? While we're on the subject of chaos and things to come, I thought I'd just mention that the Chaos Battle Forces will be the subject of the channel's May giveaway. This one being for a giveaway for both of the Chaos Space Marine Battle Forces, the Dread Talons and the Veterans of the Long War. The Veterans of the Long War being the more core Chaos Detachment with the new Lord on foot, Terminators, Legionaries, Possessed and Chosen, and the Dread Talons being the Jump Lord, Raptors, Cultists and the Demon Prince. As ever with the channel giveaways, there's two equal ways to enter, both of them links down in the video description below. You can either support the channel on Patreon for any amount, that gets you automatic entry to the giveaways each and every month, plus it is what allows me to keep making these videos on the channel. Or you can support via social media completely for free, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like the Facebook page, and then to actually enter the draw, there'll be a post that appears on Facebook on the 1st of May. Respond to that post with any photo of a 40k mini or imagery, along with your name and the date handwritten within the photo. The last bit just to try and stop people spamming or Facebook bots. The post goes live and then it's active for 24 hours, then I draw the winners. The draw is done with a random number generator and it's announced on the channel update video on YouTube around about the 4th of May. Everyone gets one entry and both sides are equal. And then I'll post the boxes when I get my orders of them. And obviously that will depend on when Games Workshop actually get around to releasing and shipping out the boxes. 
In any case, though, could be a fun way to get your hands on a big new Chaos Force, and I'll most certainly be keeping the regular giveaways coming every month in a similar manner. Feel free to check out the Patreon page or the Facebook page. They're both linked down in the video description. In any case, look forward to hearing all your thoughts on the topics. Feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics if you'd like to see more news videos like this. And while we're on the subject of Patreon, that is the main way that I can keep on making these videos each day. And I do try and give some rewards to channel backers. Channel patrons do get to see certain videos early. There's regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel. And automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with the chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening and I'll hope to see you guys next time.